Hey everyone, and welcome back to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're gonna to be talking about communities and SEO best practices. If you've been liking our content or this is your first time coming to the channel, click subscribe so you can keep getting the videos and click like if you like the content. With that, let's jump right into it. So if you're not familiar with building websites or working through kind of optimization of keywords and, and Google and kind of site performance, you may not know what SEO means, although you may have heard it thrown around a couple times on the internet. So I'm going to start with a quick definition. SEO stands for search engine optimization, and it's the process of getting traffic for free or also called organically to your site based on search engine results. So if someone types in uh, tiny homes, like our example, they should go to our site organically without, without us having to pay for those ads. So the optimization of SEO allows that to be more organic and just actually increase the number of uh, visitors and traffic you have to your site. So when it comes to a storefront and building out kind of this B2B uh, mentality or B2B2C mentality, it's really important to keep in mind uh, how to follow these best practices so that your visitors can find your public website easier uh, and more organically. So I just pulled up on the screen here the uh, B2B commerce uh, section around SEO, and it's not very comprehensive, but uh, we'll go through this, and I, I thought I'd reference uh, a couple of the areas in here, uh, as it does have a couple of nice steps in here. Uh, so if one of the first things that Salesforce suggests you do when it comes to SEO is update your meta tags. And these meta tags allow the crawlers of the search engines um, or the bots to be able to uh, understand what your pages are and make them more readable for the users as people try to search for your content. Um, so there really are three different sections that you have the capability to do uh, this meta tags inside of each page. That's at the title level, the description level, and the heading level. And you kind of go through this content in a little more depth um, as uh, you have time and I'll make sure I put this link in the uh, description of the video. Uh, but what we'll, we'll focus on today is the title and the description. So let's jump over into a Salesforce and go to our experience builder here. Now, as you go into each one of these pages, we haven't really clicked too far around the, the page properties yet, but today we're going to do that. And you can find that up here at the top under the gear, and that's where you can find these page properties. Now underneath these properties, you can see that there's a lot of information here just to give you reference to what this page name is and the URL. Uh, you have the ability to determine if this is public access, uh, if it's private. Uh, one of the key things around SEO is that if you want your uh, searches to be able to come to your pages uh, organically, they need to be public. Uh, so you'll have to have a conversation with yourself about what pages should be public and which ones should be hidden behind a login page, for instance. Uh, in some cases, B2B customers don't want their prices to or products to be shown publicly unless a person has a login. Other times, uh, it's okay to have them completely uh, public, uh, but you don't want to be able to purchase until you actually have a login. Uh, so you have to have that uh, kind of decision made coming into this, uh, but you'll be able to kind of flip this over to public here. Uh, and then as you scroll down, you can see that there is an SEO section on each one of these pages. Now, it's really important to have a good description uh, in the title and in the description section here. And these uh, fields here can be filled in either manually. So it might make sense for you to fill in like the home page, for instance, uh, manually with a, a short sentence here. But let's go over to the product detail page because these are the pages that really you want your uh, site to index on and for people to be able to search and find so they can find your products and eventually, you know, go and purchase those. So let's open up the page properties of the product detail. You can see the top section uh, is uh, very similar. Um, we're going to come back to the URL here in a second. But as you scroll down here, you can see that it automatically fills in the title as the object and then the title. Uh, so in this case, it would be something like uh, product colon whatever the name of the product is. Uh, which for our purposes is a fairly fine description here, although you're welcome to uh, change this and reorganize it uh, so that it's more applicable uh, to your customers. Like for instance, you might want to take the product out of it because that's redundant, right? If a person's searching for the product, they know it's going to be a product. Uh, so you could take that, take that out here. The other thing that I'll hover over here for a moment is how you can use this information. Um, so one of the, the things that isn't filled in automatically is description. Uh, so if you're using the standard description field on the product, you might want to do something like this where you take 
this existing one. And then you can see that in their um, description on the right hand side, it says record.field, which means that we can take any of the fields that are on the object and drop them in here for the description. So if we wanted to use the standard description field, we'd use that. It does a little quick check to make sure that it's valid. And now that description field will be used to populate um, you know, all the information about this page. So that's a key area you wanna make sure you check. I know it's a small area, but you need to be able to go through and do this on the product detail uh, level, the list level. The, um, uh, the list will be important because those are your categories and your categories also want to be very SEO friendly so that you're, when you're looking for a category of doors, for instance, for tiny homes, uh, that yours is something that pops up in there at a category level. And then if they search deeper for the actual name of a specific brand or product, they'll find the product pages as well. Now, another really important thing to understand about you know, SEO in general and the storefront here is how this information is distributed back to uh, Google. And one of the key mechanisms that we can use here is what's called a sitemap. And this sitemap really gives you a a download of all the pages and the high level information about each one of those pages. And this information is used to allow your site to be uh, indexed uh, and understood from a search engine perspective. And you can see there's a little bit of information here about how the sitemap actually works. Um, but as we go down to uh, store snapshot SEO, you can see in this description here that a full snapshot is taken every 15 days of your site. But as you incrementally add content, snapshots are taken every 24 hours uh, for your site here. Uh, however, there are cases where you may have, like it says here, push out a new price for a product or added some products uh, to your site. And you really need those to go out like as soon as possible. You can't wait 24 hours or longer for it to uh, be pushed out because the sale might be over. Um, and so there are mechanisms that where you can actually force um, an update and this forcing of an update will allow you to um, push that information out uh, faster than that. The other thing that's really important here is understanding the initial launch of your site as well. When you initially launch a site, it's best practice to go and take your sitemap and take it to uh, Google and Bing and the other uh, search engines and basically provide it to them. And providing that information to them up front enables them to know what pages to index and them to do it quicker. So the question might be raised, do I need to do this? And the answer is technically no, you don't have to. It eventually will find your site and it will eventually find all the pages and the relevancy of it. Uh, however, it might be a good idea for you to do that uh, so it finds that information faster for you. Okay, so I briefly hit on this uh, earlier, but uh, one of the, the important things here is to determine what pages are going to be public for your site. Well, one of the first things that you'll need to do in your site in order to make any of that possible is to go underneath administration here and underneath buyer access, there's the store access settings here, which shows you your buyer groups and you know what buyer groups actually have uh, access to the store. But if you keep scrolling down, there's guest browsing. And in order for your site to be accessible at all, you need to create a buyer profile by clicking this button here. And what that will do is it will generate a, a guest profile for you. Uh, you'll need to go through and assign the entitlement policies and the price books and everything that kind of shows you as it's walking through here uh, to your site. Um, and that will enable the person to be able to view kind of the initial information. And you wanna make sure that you get the object permissions correct and all of that is uh, set up. And then the pages that I showed earlier have the ability to toggle those on and off at a page level. Uh, so you wanna make sure you get that combination right because once you do that, then uh, you'll have you know, home page, maybe a couple of marketing pages, your category pages, your product pages available to be searched uh, and indexed by uh, the search engines. Now, one of the last things I wanted to hit on very quickly is performance of your site. So what actually makes up an SEO ranking when it comes to, let's take Google for instance, since they're one of the largest ones now, um, you have to consider content and accessibility, uh, how well your content is, you know, has alt tags and is, is really uh, put on the site um, and how well it renders across mobile friendliness and whatnot. Uh, page speed and performance is a big one. Um, content and what you actually say in there, does it map up to kind of useful information or not? Uh, links and, and so on and so forth. But the thing I really wanted to touch on was performance. 
And uh, Salesforce has a really good article that I'll pop up here for a second. Uh, it's called Advanced SEO for Lightning Communities. So the way I'm kind of showing you this information here is through a storefront since, you know, that's what we've been kind of doing on the Tiny Homes channel here for a bit. Um, but you can do this for general communities or for a storefront. And it gives some really good information here uh, acro across kind of, you know, how things are, um, you know, actually displayed to search engines and to users. So you ha have that information. It talks a little bit about sitemaps that I talked about earlier. Uh, but if you keep scrolling down here to the very, very bottom, uh, there's a really good plugin that you should consider downloading. And I'll illustrate that for a moment here. So we have a very basic storefront available to us right now. Uh, but if you go over to uh, my add-ons, I have Salesforce community pages installed. And what this is going to do is it's going to go across your site and it's going to show all the performance of the different areas that are really applicable to SEO. Uh, and so you can see that in some areas, I got a lot of A's. In other areas, I got an F or a D or a C. And the accumulation of all this is bringing me to about an 88. Now this is a very light site right now. So if I were to add a couple more components on here, some content, and really to make this production ready, this likely would go down in some areas and up in other areas because uh, we're going to add more content, so it's going to take a little bit longer to load, uh, but we might optimize a couple of other areas here. So what you can really do is you can click on a couple of these down here below, and it will show you, you know, the information uh, at a you know SEM server response level. Uh, you can go over into Waterfall to see what's happening on the page, and you can see the timeline of all the events on here, components, and it, it gives you a lot of really rich information here. I found this very helpful as you kind of go through and try to optimize each one of these pages here. And you can go into certain sections and say, why am I getting a C minus on this? And it will try to explain each one of these. So this is a really good um, option for you to uh, highly optimize your site uh, and really take it to the next level uh, when it comes to optimization. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope this was helpful content for general communities and also for commerce sites and how to really make your SEO um, perform for you so you can get that organic traffic. If you like the content that we went through today, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.